What's up everyone? Welcome back to this week's 5 Minute Friday. Today we're going to talk about 12 lead EKG interpretation, what you need to know about 12 leads. So let's get started. I'm going to turn my timer on to five minutes. Hopefully we don't go over. All right, so EKGs. We do tons of EKGs in the emergency department for lots of different reasons. I would say the primary reason is chest pain. Chest pain, shortness of breath will be the main reason you get an EKG. And in the emergency department, we get that EKG because we want to know if the patient's having an acute MI. If they're having an acute STEMI, then that really changes the course of action as to what we're going to do over the next few minutes to few hours. So. First tip I have for you, why are you getting the EKG? That will kind of drive like what it is that you're looking for. So if the patient's having chest pain, back pain, shortness of breath, whatever it is, why are you getting that EKG? Maybe if you're in primary care, you're looking for like left ventricular hypertrophy, so some heart strain from persistent hypertension, whatever it is, think about like why am I getting this study right now? That will kind of drive what it is that you're looking for on the EKG. If you're getting it because of chest pain, you're trying to rule out a STEMI, you're trying to look to see if the patient has a ginormous PE with right heart strain, whatever it is, think about why am I, why am I getting this study right now? Second thing, examine the rate. So when you get your 12 lead printout, they're 10 seconds. It will tell you the rate at the top. So 72 beats per minute, whatever, 80, 120, whatever the rate is, verify that rate because those can be absolutely wrong at times. How do you verify the rate? So you can count the number of QRS complexes in the like 10 second sheet of EKG and you can multiply that by six, so a minute, and that will give you uh, an estimated rate and you can verify that with what the rate says on the actual printout itself. So examine the rate. Is the patient tachycardic? Is the patient bradycardic? Is the pa does the patient have a uh, normal heart rate? Whatever the rate is, examine the rate, verify it, and then move on to your next step, which is examining the rhythm. So number three, examine the rhythm. And again, this is not really, this is like five minute video is not really meant to teach you about cardiac rhythms and how to identify those on a 12 lead. So you need to have some like prior knowledge going into this about identifying rhythms. And I'm sure most of you watching this have taken a CLS or PALS or some sort of advanced EKG, a rhythm identification class. You can identify lethal rhythms. So VTAC, VFib, torsades, whatever the rhythm is, you can probably identify it. You can identify AFib, uh, SVT, there's lots of different rhythms that as bedside nurses, you know, and even as nurse practitioners, you learn that in school, PA school, physician, whatever, you learn to identify the rhythm. So figure out what rhythm it is. And a key tip here, if you can't identify the rhythm, then speak to somebody who might can. So if you have a cardiologist on call, the cardiologists where I work are super great. You can just like snap a picture of the EKG and text it to them and they'll like call you and you can have a discussion about the EKG. Um, Talk to another nurse or another PA or NP or talk to an attending and get a second set of eyes on the EKG. And don't be afraid to do that. That's something that I like somewhat struggled with at the beginning is like looking at EKGs and feeling like you need to know everything. That's kind of a scary mindset and you really don't need to do that. So if you have any questions or any concerns, have a second set of eyes on that EKG to say, yes, that is X, Y, and Z rhythm, whatever it might be. And that's super, super helpful. So I would encourage you to like, get somebody else to lay eyes on the EKG. And that's something that I implement in my practice and something that helps me. So identify that rhythm. The next step, fourth step, identify the axis, the segments, and then the intervals. So the axis really determines the lie of the heart. So what like plane the heart is on. So there's like a normal axis, there's right axis, and there's left axis. And the axis will kind of give you a little bit of a further insight into what might be going on with the patient. So if the patient has right axis deviation, they might have a ginormous PE that's causing right heart strain. They might have right ventricular hypertrophy or a right bundle branch block. With left axis deviation, they might have left ventricular hypertrophy or like a left anterior fascicular block or some sort of left bundle branch type block. And that can sometimes show in left axis deviation. So again, the axis is not, I wouldn't say super crucial, but it can kind of give you a little insight into determining 
like what else might be going on with this patient. So there is a way, uh, 441, okay, we are getting somewhat close here. I'll try to speed it up a little bit. Um, there is a way math-wise that you can determine what the actual axis is in a number. You can like Google cardiac axis, they'll come up with this like circular pattern with all these arrows and numbers and you learn that in school, but honestly, in like actual practice, you don't really do that. All right, five minutes. We're going to go a little further. You don't actually do that in practice. So you want to look at two different leads. So you want to look at lead one and lead AVF. Those two will give you like a window into the axis and a very easy way to determine that. So here's how you do it. So you want to look at the QRS complexes in lead one and AVF. So if the QRS complexes are, have a positive deflection, meaning they go up in both leads, that is a normal axis, normal axis. And that tells you the patient has a normal axis. You don't really need to do anything else. If there is a positive QRS deflection in lead one, so it goes up, and then in lead AVF, there is a negative deflection, so it goes down. So one is up, uh, AVF is down, then you have a left axis deviation. And again, you can like do a little more research to find out why might the patient have a left axis deviation on their EKG. Maybe it's chronic, maybe it's like a normal variant, but maybe they have something more going on and you wanna look into it a little further. All right, right axis deviation. If you have a negative QRS deflection in lead one and a positive QRS deflection in lead AVF, so negative one, positive in AVF, then you have a right axis deviation. And kind of the big thing you see with right axis deviation is right heart strain. So maybe they have like COPD and they, or they have a PE. Those things can cause pretty significant right heart strain showing up in right axis deviation. So just think about why might the patient have this going on? And then you want to examine the intervals and the segments. So look at all of the intervals, like the PR interval, the QT interval, look at the segments, so the ST segment, look at the T waves, look at all of those like little things to determine is there like a pattern going on in this EKG. If you think the patient has a STEMI, are there uh, two or more contiguous leads that have ST elevation greater than one millimeter? And if you, have, if, you, if you see ST elevation and it's not in a pattern, so it's not lateral, it's not inferior, it's not anterior, then it's not a STEMI. So any STEMI is gonna have a pattern. So an inferior MI, inferior wall MI, two, three AVF, and all the different patterns for the uh, acute MIs. And again, that's something that you probably need to know before you start trying to interpret a 12 lead EKG. And not something this video is gonna cover super in depth. But to try to figure out with your ST, T wave segments, is there a pattern that may show acute ischemia? And then that will kind of drive your decision making and then determine the intervals, see if there's a prolonged QT or whatever, whatever it may be. Thank you for watching. Um, that's really all I have for you in regards to EKGs. Comment below, tell me your tips for interpreting EKGs and if you have any questions. Also, tell me if you have any topics you want me to cover in this new segment of Five Minute Friday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.